The Yom Tov of Pesach is called by three names, three titles. The first one is in Torah Shebeksav, where it's called Chag HaMatzos. Then we have how it's referred to in our davenings, in the Nusach HaTfilo. We also add, we say Chag HaMatzos, but then we say Zman Cheiruseinu. And finally, we have in the expressions of Razal, and this is also the way people refer to it, the days of Pesach, the seven, eight days of Pesach, are referred to as Chag HaPesach. The Eshloim, says the Rebbe, we could say that the Yom Tif has a very, very general theme, a general idea, and this Nakuda, this point, includes three parts, three, three aspects, which are expressed in these three names. And since the Seder in Torah, the order in Torah is also Torah, is also a Yeroah lesson, so therefore the three names and the three ideas, the three points that come out of it, are in the order of their importance. That means, first and foremost, comes the name in Torah Shebeksav, Chag HaMatzois. That's the first part of the order of what Pesach is going to be teaching us. Then is going to come Zman Cheiruseinu, which is the Nusach that the Anche Knesses HaGdoilo had established, what's known as Matbeah Shatavu Chachamim, what the Chachamim coined. And this is the way we say it in our davenings, which is Zman Cheiruseinu. And finally, Chag HaPesach, which is the accepted regular name that appears in the Lashon Razal and that people refer to it as. The Rebbe goes on and explains that the time of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, as described in the Nevuah of Yecheskel, is considered the birth of Am Yisroel. The reason why it's referred to as the birth is not only because this is the time that the Yidin became a nation, which this, we, we would be able to say, Lahavdu, you could say that about other nations as well, but rather the fact that Yidin were transformed and became a new Metzius, a new entity. And the Rebbe explains, the whole purpose and the whole kavana, the idea, the shleimus of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is Matan Torah. As the Pasuk itself indicates, where Hashem says to Moshe Rabbeinu, when you'll take the Yidin out of Mitzrayim, Tav, do Nesorelikim alahora, you're going to be serving Hashem at this mountain. In other words, Har Sinai, this is the point of Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim. In fact, says the Rebbe, this is one of the reasons why Chag HaShavuos, Zman Matan Torah Sainu, is actually set, the time of when the Yom Tov is, is set by counting seven weeks from Pesach, or from the second day of Pesach, in order to show that Shavuos, Matan Torah, is really one continuation following on from Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim, which is the birth of Am Yisrael, and this is why Matan Torah is fixed on our calendar, really based only on the fact of when Pesach was. In other words, the birth of Am Yisrael is very, very strongly connected with the fact, again, not just birth as a nation, but primarily that it's a Torah nation, that their whole mohus, the whole essence of a Yid, even as an individual, is Torah. And this new existence that the Yidin became now is not only because that in Golos Mitzrayim, Yidin were in a very, very lowly state. And on their own, they weren't ready yet to be vessels to accept the Torah. And on the contrary, being that they were in Memtes, Shari, Tuma, the 49 gates of Tuma, their whole situation was in opposition to Torah and Kedusha. But more importantly, because Torah, the Pasuk says, Va'ei etzli omoin, and Shashuim, the Torah is Hashem's delight, Hashem's treasure. Hashem's hidden precious treasure. In other words, Torah in its own, on its own is completely higher than creation and than creations. And therefore, when the Yidin are becoming a Torah nation, as Yidin are down here in this world, and furthermore, they were even in Mitzrayim, so now they needed to become a whole new existence because Torah is completely not within their realm. And that's really what Yitzhiyas Mitzrayim is all about, the idea of them becoming a whole new nation, a new existence, in order to be able to receive the Torah. So as the Rebbe, based on all of this, will be able to explain the three names of Chag HaMatzos, Zman Cheiruseinu, and Chag HaPesach. This is that these three ideas are going to express three steps in this particular order, three modes that are needed in order to achieve and to create this new existence of what the Yidin are going to be in order to accept the Torah. To explain this, the Rebbe says, we're first going to give an example of the order of how a Rav, of how a teacher learns with a Talmud, learns with a student, 
an intellectual matter, a dvar seichel, to, but the kind of seichel, the, of the type of thing that the Talmud himself with his own seichel would never be able to reach. And therefore, again, it's like a davar chodesh, it's something brand new. And not something because it's technically something that he just didn't hear until now, but we're speaking about something of the kind of seichel that's not at all in the realm of the Talmud's intellect. So what are the three stages? The first thing that's going to be needed by the Talmud is the concept of bitul. The Chazal tell us that a Talmud Chacham that's sitting in front of his Rebbe, Sif Soisov Noit Foismar, his lips have to be dripping with bitterness, which as Rashi explains means it's a concept of Eimo, or reverence. And this is because this Talmud with his own koiches, with his own faculties, with his own abilities, with his own seichel, is not able to accept, to receive this new seichel, which is completely beyond himself. So it's only bitul, by putting himself aside, by nullifying himself, that's what's going to make him a keili to be able to receive it. Similar to what the Chazal say, clay reikon, when you have an empty vessel, then machzig, then it could hold on, it could be a vessel to contain something new. Point number two, after the Talmud was in that state of bitul, now the Talmud needs to try very hard to understand the Svara, to integrate the Svara, to use his own seichel, his own mitzvah, to really be able to understand this new concept. In other words, although we said that, yes, it's true, clay reikon machzik, you need to have that empty vessel, but at the same time, you do need to be a vessel. And furthermore, the vessel, the container, has to be complete. Not like a container that has a hole, which then it's going to completely destroy and nullify the idea of the container. And therefore, the idea of bitul by itself is not going to be enough, but rather now the Talmud has to have this idea where he's paying attention and really trying to get involved in receiving, accepting, understanding the seichel to be the keli to absorb this new seichel. Then we come to step number three. Stage number three is going to be that the whole purpose of the learning is that eventually the Talmud, as the expression is, koi inish adayte de rabbi that the Talmud himself will be able to come to the das, to the understanding, to, the, to fully be able to grasp everything that his Rebbe is teaching him. And therefore, although it's true that right now in his current situation, he's not at all together, he's completely not able to understand the knowledge, the understanding, the intellect of his Rebbe. And this is why, in fact, the Rav has to give him in a, it has to be contracted that it should be able to relate to the seichel of the Talmud. And in fact, the whole depth of the Rav's seichel is going to be completely hidden and concealed in the little bit that he gives over. However, the Talmud has to have that sort of um, tenua, that sort of mode that he wants to get out of his, the limitations of his own seichel and ultimately to lift himself up to be able to become one with the seichel of the Rav. And it's only through this that eventually he will be able to come to this level of koya daite rabbi to really understand his Rebbe's das, which is a completely different category of seichel. So before the Rebbe goes and explains how this all is similar to the idea of Yetzias Mitzrayim, first the Rebbe discusses this idea itself a little bit of these two stages of first having that state of bitul and then working on trying to understand it. So the Rebbe asks in Se'iv Dalet, regarding this order that we said, that the first thing has to be Sif Sois of Noit Mar, that your lips are dripping with bitterness, meaning a concept of bitul and awe. And only then comes the idea of being, being a keli, a metzius, and really trying to understand the seichel. Seemingly one could ask, the Gemara says that Rabba, before he would learn and teach to the Rabbanon, to, his, to the Chachamim, to his students, he would first say a milse, the b'dicha says something humorous, u'batchi rabbonon, the chachamim would laugh, and then l'soif, only after that did they sit in awe and fear, and he would start teaching. Which seems to be exactly the opposite of what we said before. There seems to be that first, he needs to open up their hearts, and that is making them a keli, to be able to understand the learning, and this he's doing by first giving them something to laugh about, something to be happy about. And only afterwards comes the bitul, the yira, 
which seems to be the reverse of what we said before, that first comes the bitul, and then you start becoming a keli and being able to understand. But the, real, the explanation to this, says the Rebbe, is that the idea of the milsa, the bedicha, said that needs to be before starting to teach the Rabbanim, before starting to teach the Chachamim, is really only a general preparation to the whole idea of learning. It's not actually part of the learning itself. It's not part of what the Rav is teaching and giving to the Talmud yet. In other words, the fact that the Milsa, the B'dicha said this humor, humorous car- comment um, would be said before the learning, what it needs to do is, it's not about making him ready now to accept this particular seichel. It's more a general thing that he should even be interested in being a makabal. He should be even interested in accepting that his seichel should be standing in a way that I'm be, being ready to be receptive right now. But the actual connection between the Rav and the Talmud, which is going to be mainly the seichel being over, given over from the Rav and the Talmud, this is really starting mainly when Yosef Be'em, so when the Talmud is standing, is sitting there with bitul, with awe, and only then is the, is the Rav starting to teach. In fact, it's just interesting to point out, there's a footnote over here where the Rebbe says, the Rebbe brings from a mimer of the Rebbe Rashab, that when the Talmud is sitting there, even, even his yearning, his desire to want to hear the Seichel, even that could sometimes be a little bit distracting and confusing to actually receive the Seichel. In other words, there needs to be the absolute bitul to start with. Back inside the Sicha. Says the Rebbe, with this explanation that we said, that you need a general idea of first being ready to accept the Seichel, and that was through the humorous comment, but then starts the practical Seder of the Ashpo, and that starts with the Bittul, we'll be able to understand something that the Chazal say, the Gemara says, You should always be using your left hand to push away, and with your right hand you're bringing clothes. From the order of this expression, it sounds like, Lo'olam, always there needs to be the left first, the left pushing away first, and only then comes the Yemin Mikarevis. And the fact, the Rebbe says, in fact, the idea that we're saying, that smoil doiche, we're not only saying that you need to be using your smoil, the left hand, the, the weaker hand to be doiche, that's simply what we're saying, and with Yamin, the Kirov has to be done with your stronger hand, with the right hand. So that's 100% true. But in addition to that, we're also speaking about the order. It seems like we're saying the smoil has to go first. So here again, we could ask the same sort of question. How does that fit with what Rabbah did? That first he would start off seemingly with the Yamin, Mekarevis first saying a light-hearted comment, a humorous comment, and only then came the Bitul which seems to be the opposite of what we said, first comes the smoil doich and then yimim mekarevis. Another question, says the Rebbe, we have a general rule that the right always comes before the left. Here we're saying the left smoil doich comes before yimim mekarevis to make the question even stronger. After the statement of you should always have smoil doich and yimim mekarevis, the Gemara says there's three things, yetzer, our inclination, Tinoik, a little child, Isha, a woman. There needs to be with these three things, Smoil Doicha, Yemin Mikarevis. So the Rebbe asks a very, very simple question. We know that the Seder of how we teach a child and how we get a child involved in Yiddishkeit and so on is that we start off with him with things that he loves according to his young age. We tell him, if you learn this, if you read this, we'll give you some nuts, etc., other things that the child will enjoy, as the Rambam elaborates in Pirush HaMishnayis, from which we understand that clearly by a child there needs to be Yemin Mekareves before Smoil Doichi. You have to start off with these sweets. Says the Rebbe, as we see practically, if you're going to start off with a child first with Smoil Doichi, you may push him away, you may reject him completely, he'll feel rejected, he's not going to be interested in learning at all. Says the Rebbe, but based on what we said before, it's understood. When we say, La Oilam Tehe Smoil Doichi, that the left comes first, this is already when we're dealing with, when we're accomplishing, when we're giving already to the other person. And there, as we said, the smoil doiche comes first, first comes a certain element of bitu, and then you mikarevis. But this is completely nothing to do with the fact that we need something even before all of that. We need to do different sort of activities of you mikarevis that are going to come as an absolute 
and a necessary introduction before we even start dealing with a child, for example, with a Talmud. For example, saying the humorous things to a Talmud or giving the child sweets and things that he loves and so on and so forth. Only then later, once you're starting and dealing already in the Seyed Rashpo, will we have the left first and then the right, the Bittul, and then be more of a Kaili. Says the Rebbe in Seyvav, just like we need these three, three modes, when one learns a Seichel Chodesh, a new Seichel, so too, and how much more so, when we're speaking about a person being transformed and becoming a whole new Metzias, as we were discussing what happens by Yitzias Mitzrayim. We said that the Yidden, this is a time when they're being born as the Jewish nation. And we said that the culmination of all of that is going to be when they're going to be serving Hashem at Har Sinai. So here too, we have three ideas. Number one, the first thing that needs to be in order for Yidden to be able to take the Torah, they need to have the idea of Tavdun. Tavdun is early, Kim Allah, as we said before. There needs to be the idea of avoided, the idea of effort. They need to be mevatel, they need to nullify the previous way how they were, which is an opposition to Torah. And Tavdun is like an evid, the work of a servant, the work of a slave, which is doing with bitul and kabbalah soil. Because in order to be able to accept the Torah of Hashem, you need to have nas and nishma. First nas and then nishma. We first have to completely nullify who, were, who we were before. Then comes stage number two. Although there needs to be the Tavdun, but it's not in a way that it's breaking the Metzius of the Yid, it's breaking who the Yid is. On the contrary, this itself is really who he is deep inside, who his real Metzius is. In other words, this Avoide itself becomes who he is. This is similar to what Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel says in regards to fish. His opinion is that there wouldn't be a, considered a Chatzitza for when it comes to toiveling. Fish in the water wouldn't be considered a chatzitza, according to him, because this is our whole mitzvah, the water. In a similar way, Yidin and Torah are like fish and the water, and therefore the avoida of being involved in Torah and mitzvahs is not a work that's completely breaking the person, but on the contrary, now this itself is becoming who he is. And as Chazal tell us, Ein l'cha ben chayrin, there's no free man, unless someone that learns Torah. Seemingly, one could ask, Torah is the idea of Tavdun, as we said before. Seemingly, it's a concept of Avdus, of, serv- of, of, of serving, and Avoida. But the Rebbe says, but the truth of the matter is that the nature of the Yid himself is to do Torah and mitzvahs. As the Mishnah says, Ani nivresi l'shamesh eskoini, I was created to serve Hashem. And therefore, when a Yid is not fulfilling Torah mitzvahs rachman al-Litzlan, although it seems to him, to him as if he's free, as if he doesn't have a yoke, and that it's easier for him than if he would be fulfilling Torah and mitzvahs, but in truth, since this sort of lifestyle, when it's not according to Torah chas v'shalom, is the opposite of what's demanded and what's needed, based on his real essence and nature, in truth, that's going to be the Avoid Perach. Similar to what Chazal say, that Avoid Perach, this back-breaking and crushing labor in the times of Mitzrayim, was when the men were, giving the women, were given the women's work and the women were given the men's work. Why is that? Even though seemingly, when the man is doing the woman's work, it seems to be an easier, technically, it seems to be an easier type of work, but it's considered Avoid Perach because it's not what he's used to, it's not really who he's all about. And the same thing over here, only when a Yid is really tavdun, when he's really serving the Eibishter, that's when he's truly a ben chayrin. So again, just to summarize so far the first two points. The first thing that needs to be the nasa, the bitul, nullifying of the first, of my own mitzias. But then I come to the next stage with the recognition and the realization that my real mitzias itself is about Torah and mitzvahs. This is who I am. Then comes stage number three through Matan Torah. There's a change that's shaloi be'erech that happens in the Yid. And so that the tavdun of the Yid, which seemingly he's working and serving, but within his limitations according to his own metzias. But really be'pnimiyas is an avoider that's connected with Hashem, the nois in Torah, and therefore it's connecting him now and lifting him up to a place that's higher than any sort of limitations at all. It says the Rebbe, now that we understand these three things, again, the first thing, the bitul. The second thing, that is becoming my metzius. And the third thing, that I'm going even higher than my metzius completely. These are the three names of Chag Zman Cheiruseinu, and Chag Pesach. 
Matzah represents the idea of bitul, the lack of rising and lifting oneself up and so on. Cheiruseinu represents how this bitul became my mitzvah, the mitzvah of the Yid, that he really feels that the, that, that the Torah and mitzvah is my true freedom and I have a geschmack in it. Now I feel like a free person when I'm serving the Eibishter. And finally, Pesach, from the expression of jumping and skipping, a person jumping completely out of who he was. This is what needed to be by Yidin. And this is because of also because the way Hashem acted with Yidin from above, in a way of dilug, of jumping. By Yitzhiya's Mitzrayim and Matan Toida, this is the idea of going out of one's limitations completely and reaching to a level that's completely higher than oneself. Says that ever one of the heroes that we have from all, from all of this in our Avoidus Hashem of every single Yid. The Alter Rebbe tells us in Tanya, Reishi, so Avoidah, the Ikra, the Shorsha, the beginning of Avoidah, the whole main point of Avoidah, and the root of Avoidah is Yira, or fear, Kabbalah soil, the Avoidah of an Evid. But the Avoidah shouldn't be done with sadness, Chas V'Shalom, and feeling broken and breaking oneself, because the truth is that V'yamech Kulam Tzadikim, Every yid deep down inside is of course a tzaddik, unless a person has set up this curtain that blocks between himself and Hashem, which of course then he has to go and break it. But what's he breaking? Breaking the klipa through breaking his heart and being bitter and so on. Because in Kedusha on itself there's no concept of shvira, of breakage. The fact that sometimes there needs to be a leiv nishbar, a broken heart and a lowly spirit, is because of our guf and our nefesh abahamis, which chas v'shalom sometimes rule over the person, and then this leiv nishbar and this meridus, this bitterness which is coming from a holy place, gvuris of kedusha, will nullify their power. But as far as the nefesh shali kiss, there's no concept of shvira, of breaking. There's only room for simcha. The Rebbe over here brings in a story the Rebbe says, this is the explanation for a story that the Alter Rebbe had a silver snuff box that didn't have a cover. Because the shiny cover the Alter Rebbe used to straighten his tefillin shal roish. So that they should be accurately exactly in the middle. When this idea was being discussed in front of the Tzemach Tzedek, someone expressed himself that the Alter Rebbe broke off the cover of that snuff box. The Tzemach Tzedek responded that my Zayda, the Alter Rebbe's inyan, was not to break. Rather, he definitely didn't break anything. Most probably, there was some thread, some hinge, some screw that was connecting um, the cover with the box. And my grandfather, the Alter Rebbe, just took out that thing that connects it, and that's how we used it. So the Rebbe asks, seemingly, even if the Alter Rebbe would break it, he's using it to do a mitzvah. He's not doing it for the sake of breaking, just, just but for breaking. So the idea is... Based on what we just said, in Kedusha there is no concept of Shvira of breaking. And therefore the Tzemach Tzedek was sure that the Alt Rebbe certainly did not break anything. So back to the original point, there needs to be the idea on the one hand of Yira, but at the same time it has to become part of my Metzius. And therefore this Bittol and Kabbalah soil that's demanded as Reish Sa'avoida, which is the avoid of the Nefesh Ali Kis itself, needs to be with Chayis, with Geshmak, knowing that this is my true freedom and the true mitzi is the true idea of what a yid is really all about.